In this lesson, we're going to explore brush customization in more detail. When creating brushes, I start by showing the advanced brush controls and the general panel. I'll also open the full view brush selector. I'll show my custom dabs palette drawer so we can access the dab preview. Normally dab preview can be found in the general brush controls, but I have moved it to a custom palette drawer that specializes in customizing dabs. I'll also make the stroke preview visible in the advanced brush controls. This layout makes it easy to modify the brush properties while previewing those changes in real time. From the Painter 2022 library, let's select the real wet oils brush called Grainy Flow Map. And if I reduce or enlarge the brush size, you can see the dab and stroke previews are updating. While you'll be doing the bulk of your brush modification through the advanced brush controls, the general panel is where you want to start when you're creating a brush from scratch. It can be helpful to imagine that the brush you're creating is an animal. The general panel is where I can change a bird to a mammal or a mammal to a reptile. These would be big, drastic changes to the behavior and appearance of the animal or brush. The brush changes made in the advanced brush controls are more subtle in comparison. For example, changing a pigeon to a parrot or a parrot to an ostrich. In brush terms, I could turn a pencil into charcoal with the advanced brush controls but I wouldn't be able to change charcoal to watercolor unless I made a major change in the general panel. Let's start by exploring the contents of the advanced brush controls. As we looked at in earlier lessons, this panel is going to show you most, if not all of the relevant properties for the currently selected brush. The contents will change depending on the brush you have selected. These properties are divided by brush shape and brush media. Within those categories are panels that control specific subcategories of brush properties. Some of these properties appear in the properties bar. And if we go to the window menu, we can find these panels here as well. They can be found under brush control panels and then brush shape and brush media. You will notice that the window menu contains many more panels than the advanced brush controls. That's because the advanced brush controls panel is concealing the properties that are not applicable to the currently selected brush. The brush we have selected is using the dab stencil. So if we look in shape, we can see some of the universal properties like size and spacing, but there are also properties like dab stencil that are specific to that brush type. If I look in media, I can also adjust the opacity, green, or real wet oil properties. Even though the advanced brush control panel reduces the number of options for a brush, it can still feel overwhelming to look at. To reduce the visual clutter, you can double click on the tabs to expand and collapse the panels. I'll also mention that there may be some uncommon properties, as well as controls from media panels that can be applied to your brush that are not suggested by the advanced brush controls. To get a preview of what each of the relevant properties can do, just hover over a property until you see a tooltip. You may also get some additional information by looking in the hints panel. You may notice that sometimes options are grayed out in the advanced brush controls. This indicates that you need to set one of the other properties to a different mode or select a different brush type in the general panel to make the other options available. I won't be able to cover absolutely every combination of properties that the advanced brush controls is capable of. It's a lot, but I am going to teach you the fundamentals so you can experiment to discover the extent of what it can do. It would take a very long time to try every possible combination of brush properties in Painter. By the time you finally did, Painter probably would have changed and added new features. That may sound frustrating, but that's actually a good thing. It means that there is a lot of room to innovate and discover new brushes. I am able to create unique brushes that no one has ever used, and that feels really cool. Aside from when I'm creating brushes, I rarely touch the advanced brush controls, because the properties I use most often are featured in my custom workspace. Now let's try making some more drastic changes to this brush using the general panel. Currently this brush is using a circular dab type. I'll change the paper to basic paper, and I'll paint a stroke. Then I'll change the dab type to something completely different. For example, if I choose palette knife, now the brush is going to have a different dab shape, and there will be different properties associated with its behavior. If I compare the two strokes, that one simple change gives us a very drastic difference in how the brush performs. An oily round brush with wet media has transformed into a flat, streaky palette knife. I'll reset this brush, while the higher level general properties are going to more radically alter the appearance and behavior of the brush, 
the lower level general properties can be a bit more subtle. For instance, I can change the subcategory from real wet oil to real wet buildup and then paint a stroke. If you look closely, all I have done is change the medium of the brush from oils to watercolor. Both are wet media, but the pigments have different qualities. The watercolor is transparent and the oils are opaque. But unless you look closely, the results appear to be quite similar. If I change the method from wet to drip, then I have changed the brush media again. Now the brush deposits a flatter, smudgy oil paint that does not diffuse. Despite these changes, all three examples are still circular in shape. That's because all the changes I made to this brush were related to the brush media. When I'm creating a brush, I start with the general panel and then refine the brush with the advanced brush controls. You can also choose any of the default Corel Painter brushes and use them as a starting point. I'll revert this template and create a bristly looking brush with oily media from scratch so you can see the process. In order to give the brush a bristly shape, I'll select a bristle dab type such as Dynamic Speckle Bristle. To make the brush deposit oily media, I'll leave the method set to drip, and if I want to add additional brush properties such as grain, I could choose the grainy drip subcategory, but I'll leave it set to drip. Now that I have defined the basic look and behavior of my brush, I can begin to fine tune it. First, I can adjust the shape of the brush to make the bristles more prominent. In the Dynamic Speckle panel, I'll change the shape of the dab by decreasing the count of speckles to 90% and the size to 5%. I think I'm happy with the shape of the brush, so now I'll refine the brush media. I'll go to the blending panel and I'll change the preset to wisp. Now when I make a brush stroke, the brush runs out of paint until more paint is loaded by picking up the pen. While the general properties tend to have the most dramatic impact on the look of a brush, with the right settings, the properties in the advanced brush controls can make some extreme changes as well. For example, Dynamic Speckle happens to be a very versatile property. I can change the blending preset to Paint with Blender, go to Spacing, and increase it to 130%, increase the size and count of the speckles to 70%, and make the edges of the dabs soft. Now I have a brush that looks more clumpy. I'll increase my brush size, and now the brush creates a pore texture. This looks nothing like the previous bristle version of this brush. However, the behavior of the media remains the same. It's still oily, opaque paint. That should give you a pretty good overview of how the general panel works alongside the advanced brush controls.